Florida Governor and Presidential Hopeful Ron DeSantis visiting with 9-11 families at Ground Zero on Monday. <clears throat> Excuse me. DeSantis calling for transparency and accountability, posting it was an honor to observe the 9-11 ceremony at Ground Zero today as a guest of families who lost loved ones. Decades later, we as a nation still owe full transparency and accountability to the grieving families who lost loved ones on 9-11. I'll bring in T.W. Shannon, the former Speaker of the Oklahoma House of Representatives with us, as well as Rick Gates, former Trump campaign aide. Uh, thank you both for coming on. We appreciate that. Rick, talk to us about this. DeSantis going to, to, to ground zero and your thoughts on that, to being a guest of the family members. Yeah, look, he hosted some families down in Florida uh, that uh, invited him to the Ground Zero ceremony. I think he had to go. I don't think it's necessarily political, even though we're in political season. Uh, but it's important as uh, a candidate running for president that he uh, meets and greets those individuals and, and participates in that solemn moment. Obviously, if he's ultimately elected president, he'll have to go to those types of ceremonies. So I don't view this as a necessarily uh, political uh, maneuver at all. I think he had to go. And frankly, if he didn't go, guess what? He would have been criticized for not going. Well, yeah, of course, to uh, to essentially deny RSVP no to an invitation by 9-11 families. Uh, you know, he showed up when we didn't see the president arrive at any of those 9-11 attack sites. We, of course, did see him at a military base in Alaska on his way back uh, from India and Vietnam. I wanted to also bring in Ron DeSantis' recent comment on age. As we know, it is a growing concern for voters in the 2024 presidential election. So here's DeSantis, a comment on former President Trump and President Biden's ages. He calls it absolutely a legitimate concern. Listen. I think it's absolutely legitimate concern. And the presidency's not a job for someone that's 80 years old, and there's nothing, you know, wrong with being 80. Obviously, I'm the governor of Florida. I know a lot of people who are elderly. They're great people. But you're talking about a job where you need to give it 100 percent. You need we need an energetic president. And I think that if the founders could could kind of look at this again. I do think they probably would have put an age limit uh, on some of these offices. I mean, it seems like our leadership class now in Washington, uh, 75, 80, 80 plus years old is, is where those folks are. And I think that I think Americans, if we if, if Biden's the Democrat nominee, I'm the Republican nominee, I think there's gonna be a lot of Americans that are going to want to see a generational passing of the torch. DeSantis is 44. For anyone keeping track, T.W., to you, what's the subtext behind that comment with CBS News? Well, first of all, I'm 45, and 44 is very, very young, in my opinion, still. <laughs> uh, but I think I think the governor brings up a good point. A lot of Americans are concerned about this kind of geriatric leadership in Washington, D.C., whether you're talking about Joe Biden or you're talking about Mitch McConnell or Dianne Feinstein. We see time and time again a leadership group that just, frankly, doesn't look prepared to lead. It's not just their age. It's their mental capacity, their health, and what they're displaying on the national stage, on the international stage, rather. I mean, listen, Joe Biden was in Vietnam. It was not his best performance. He's falling all over the place. He's stumbling over his words. He seems forgetful. People are wondering, you know, are, are the lights on and nobody's home, or do we have an even deeper problem? This isn't a matter of political shots. This is a matter of national security. A president of the United States is the leader of the free world. We need them, you know, well-bodied and well-able to lead. And there's just a lot of questions once you get above 80 about your full capacity and totality to do that. There are exceptions. Donald Trump seems to be one of those exceptions. He is of that same age class, and people are concerned about the age, but he certainly seems ready to lead and capable. There seem to be no questions about that. But when it comes to Joe Biden, there are a lot of questions. Even people that are hardcore liberals, you know, philosophically aligned, they have major concerns about his health, his ability to, to lead, and rightfully so. They should be concerned. I know I am. Yeah, Rick Gates, Wall Street Journal polling shows that 73% of voters do think Biden's too old to run. You see that here. Obviously, it's less for President Trump. And just final thoughts on that on DeSantis, not leaving it just to Biden in terms of age, but uh, obviously uh, putting Trump in that category. Do you see it that way? Rick. Well, sure, because DeSantis doesn't really have much else to talk about. You haven't seen his message resonating uh, with potential voters out there. So I think he is going to attack age. He is young. But look, I'll flip the side. You know, we elected President Obama when he was 47. I think people look back. There is a uh, an element of advantage of having additional years of experience. That's why we all get to vote and we get to choose who we think will be the best president physically, mentally, uh, you know, and all the other uh, criteria that we see. So I think DeSantis is is, is hitting a, a, an important point home, mm -hmm. but I think he needs to be careful at the same time. All right, T.W. Shannon, Rick Gates, thank you so much for weighing in on that.